hello guys and welcome to a brand new video today i'm here with another fate related video i'm going to react to an amv i think this is this has also been recommended to me and this has been recommended to me for quite a while uh, i didn't have the time like and i wasn't able to do it but finally i'm here uh this is called fate stay night unlimited blade works emia paradox and i'm guessing this is probably an amv related to um unlimited blade works <laughs> yeah let's see what this is about and um, obviously like you know if it has like a copyright song in it i'll be muting it and uh, the original link to the video that i'm watching here will be in the description box i'll also timestamp the video so that it's easier for you to sync the original video to my reaction and watch it alongside so yeah let's start let's i'm going to watch it first and then i'm going to talk about it so yeah let's get started so this is fate stay night unlimited blade works amia paradox Let's go. <laughs> All right. Oh, so it it has okay. Hmm. Oh boy. Yeah. Yeah, it's impossible to become Yeah. A hero of justice in that sense. Hmm. You know what? I would love to see these timelines, so, but it will be very sad, you know, like just looking at this. Yep. Oh boy. It's ironic, the whole thing that Kiritsugu went through, Emi also went through the same thing. Like this Emi, huh? Yeah. Boy. my obsessive need to help someone <sighs> yep my god spared to a few in the dark yeah this is Supposed to look at me. Yeah, my God. Yep. <laughs> My God. This is so good. 
Oh, was this a visual novel? Yeah, the visual novel section. Wow. Oh boy. Well, okay, that's it. Now, okay, so yeah like but well, obviously like this is one part i feel like everyone like everyone most of the people who watch the fate series this is one part that everybody knows like you know like people watch uh, fate is like the main thing that people watch first so this is an interesting thing which this whole section of emi and shiro like like what can i say like it's it's a weird type of a situation you know like where both are correct and both are I guess wrong at the same time i'm talking about both emia and shiro so like the thing is um at like you know at certain extent emia's points are actually so true because as it says like you know like the whole thing with kiritsugu was that he only looked towards the greater good you know that's why he had this type of a thing where like you know the 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 dream that the uh, holy, holy grail showed him you know where there was that that whole section of two boats you know like that i forgot the whole like you know the, the thing but there was like that whole section of um which like you know which people to save like there's like one section where um there's a lot less sacrifice but there's another section there's like a lot of a more sacrifice is going to happen i forgot the whole section but it was something like that i remember and what kirisuke does is actually choose the majority and decides to sacrifice the minority like you know that's what he that that's his like you know main thing and if you like you know look at it in complete um like you know like like from a neutral perspective if you look at it he's correct you know like save like you know like if, if, if there's a choice of you saving a lot of people and sacrificing less and vice versa obviously you're going to choose like you know like if, if from a neutral stand you're going to choose the latter that is save more and sacrifice less that's what kiritsugu does and uh, that is one thing that emia the the young emia like the emia shiro he never knew about that part of kiritsugu you know like he saw kiritsugu from a lens of a hero he just thought that oh he's a hero he never knew what are the like what are the tough choices and decisions you have to make if you decide to become a hero so he looked at uh, kiritsugu from the eyes of naivety when he was a kid and as he grew up he decided to be like kiritsugu that ideal kiritsugu but that ideal kiritsugu was nowhere you know? that was not what kiritsugu was so as he goes in into his whole like you know saving the world and then coming as like you know like like a servant coming back you know he he definitely he started with a mindset of i'm going to help everyone but as time went on and on as archer says over here as time went on and on he realized the major flaw in the ideal of kiritsugu or the ideal kiritsugu not kiritsugu's ideals but the ideal kiritsugu the, the person who he looked up to the major flaw in his ideals that is it's you, you can never save everyone you know there will always be someone who are sacrificed to save someone else like in majority of the situations and he realized that and he realized like in true sense you cannot save everyone there will always be someone who is affected by someone's happiness and he like you know like he and then like you know that he he realized how the the ideals were just fake it was just something that he saw as like a naive boy and as time went on as like you know like as he says like you know like later on it was basically 
me being called just to clean up humanity's mess and i got sick and tired of that that's why she decided to kill off his younger self <laughs> like yeah like imagine getting summoned countless of times just coming back again and again and again just to clean up humanity's mess and being being held responsible for that you know like he he went through so many things and he was like by the end of it he was like sick and tired and he realized like nah you know that little boy that naive boy he you know he should not exist so that was like emia's uh, like you know perspective in this whole situation which is at certain extents correct but at the same time it is i feel like it goes towards a lot of like you know kind of like in, in the extreme but like i feel like him actually living through this situation made him completely fed up and he decided that ah this is the only way i have to kill myself like my younger self like that's what he decided but i guess me saying that that is like you know an extreme is also my naivety talking as well because i or i doubt anyone who, not anyone but i'm sure there's someone there who probably went through like you know not the, like the same extent of the stuff that Amya went through. Probably there is somewhere someone there, you know, who has like very bad luck or something like that. But since I'm not in his shoes, maybe that's my naivety talking as well. But either way, you know, that's Amya. Like now, the whole thing with Shiro, the young Shiro, is he's too idealistic, as we can see. And uh, I've seen a lot of people like you know, kind of hate him for that, but. Like, I don't know, I feel like that is him. That's basically why, like, that's, that's the whole point of his existence. Emiyashiro, the younger Emiyashiro, you know? He's that naive boy, that's why, you know, like, Archer was created. Like, I've seen people hate on Shiro and like Archer, which is really weird in my opinion, because since that naive boy existed, that is why Emiya, like, you know, the Archer version exists. And it's like, like, it's a weird thing when people, it's like, oh, Archer is so cool, Emiya is so lame. No, they're the same person. It's basically one boy just looking at your past self and just cringing at the stuff they did, you know? Like, but everyone, everything, everyone, like, I'm, I'm sure everyone goes through that phase, like, you know? Like, when maybe, like, you know, like, you, you uh, snapped a video of yourself, of your younger self doing some weird stuff. And then when you're, like, old enough and you watch that video again, you're like, oh, my God, I was just cringy. You know that type of a situation this is basically that so <laughs> <is it? laughs> okay, it doesn't make sense to hate his younger self and like the the kind of the older archer self but i can see what where people why people actually don't like him and in like a lot of people don't like him and what's the problem with him he's he's too naive he's too idealistic but that's the whole point of his existence if that naive boy doesn't exist the archer would never have existed as well so and I feel like if they made uh, like an Emiya Shiro someone else and did not give him that personality, I think the whole point of the the show, the move, uh, like you know, the visual novel would have been just just destroyed because you know, like Emiya Shiro being that naive is the ideal situation. His naivety shows that yeah, this world is not that like you know, like not all bad. There are good parts as well. Like looking at Archer, like you know, Archer's point of view and everything. As we look at Archer, we see the ugly portion of humanity. But looking at Shiro and his hope, his ideals, we can see the little potential that humanity still has. And I feel like that's the beautiful part of Emiya Shiro's. Like you know, his naivety, his idealistic look at everything gives us the hope that ah, something can be done in this godforsaken. <laughs> world where everything is just pain and pain there are parts which are beautiful and uh, that, i guess i don't know this is just how i see Amyashiro, like uh, the younger one that his naivety his idealistic approach to everything gives us hope i guess you could say and that's also something i think probably archer just lost as he went on and on and that's why in the end you know like he asks rin to just look at his younger self so he does not become like him you know he does not lose that hope that spark in his eyes and he can still believe in humanity even if he is he's going through tough times and everything 
and uh, now here's one thing i'm kind of interested in. i i i always thought about this but i never knew like we see these type of like you know situations where like you know like these flashbacks where we see archer like you know doing everything and there's like one section i forgot like i think like he was hanged or something you know um and like i do wonder sometimes like in his timeline in archer Amya's timeline what the hell happened to rin like i'm pretty sure if rin existed there he would have never i don't know like he would have never gotten to that point of like you know like no only return that type of thing i don't know or like you know he could have kept his hope so i do always wonder like the timelines are the same like you know like emia shiro like the younger version the uh, uh, emia like you know uh, archer so what went different that emia became that archer and lost his faith in humanity and what will not happen this time because rin is there like because obviously like at, at, like if you think of it in that way i feel like rin's existence is one of the major things that would probably stop shiro from becoming that person that emia archer you know like emrin being there will probably support him a lot of times and he would never lose hope and faith in humanity so what the hell happened to rin in archer's timeline i wonder like not only rin like like uh, like arthur went away i'm pretty sure like you know she was called back you know, like nothing you can do about it like in the fate route we see arthur and dragon being called Brad back and uh, you know like the whole thing with rialt and why in the end where later on she she reunites with her that thing that i know um sakura i have no clue what the hell happened to sakura as well but i feel like <laughs> like for sakura shiro is that hope what like you know that's like you know that hope that thing that rin is for shiro so Sakura being there would not actually help Shiro in that, like, you know, pave, like, you know, show him the correct direction. Like Shiro will have to show Sakura the correct direction, which in itself is also, like, you know, like uh, a viable way, because you know, like we saw in, uh, like, in Heaven's Field what happened and how he was able to, you know, like support Sakura and move on. But you know, Rin being there, Rin was the only one who gave him that hope or showed him the path. So what happened to Rin in Archer's timeline? Like, was she not there? Like, what happened? I have no idea. So I'm pretty sure, like, you know, like, I don't know like, if, if there's like any kind of explanation. Like, let me know in the comments if, I doubt it's a spoiler, but let me know in the comment section if you guys know anything about what happened to Rin in Archer's timeline. Like, why, why did Archer become Archer if Rin was there? And like, you know, i don't know but anyways um yeah that was great you know like archers like you know the whole archer situation the archer and uh, shiro's that whole dynamic was always one of the best part of the fate route uh not fate sorry unlimited blade works route and and fate in general as well so yeah this was a great uh, video and there was like the the song was also really great it was it really kind of mixed with, well with the whole thing but yeah, the whole philosophy and everything of this is, is really good. And, you know, like, yeah, I, I, I really like it. Like, I, I've, I've never, like, you know, disliked Shiro, like, you know, because he, he's, he's that usual type of a idealistic, naive boy, that type of a character, which almost every anime have. I, I guess because of that, a lot of people don't like him. But as I said, like, you know, like Shiro being there kind of shows that yeah, there is still hope in this world. <laughs> like Emi <laughs> Archer, who he's like, ah, everything's just over. Like, <laughs> what am I even doing here? <laughs> let's just kill my younger self. And <laughs> let's let's be like you know like, <laughs> oh, like th that's basically it. So yeah, I mean, there's there's a big importance of Emi Ashiro being M the way he is, that naive old like you know young boy. And yeah, I feel like he's perfect as the way he is, and he should be continue being that way otherwise ah uh, yeah so and i doubt that he he's going to stray from his path because rin is there so yeah anyways that was it a really good video you know i that was a fantastic section and uh, yeah i loved it so that's it thanks for watching this is my reaction to face day night unlimited blade works emia paradox um if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know and i'll check them out so that's it thanks for watching i will see you guys uh, in the next fate related video i'm going to make so yeah until then goodbye and have a nice day